lovely place. Hey, look! The sea's right here. Yes, and it's wild and dangerous. But of course, those of us who live at Wyndham enjoy the excitement of the sea. <laughs> I've been waiting my whole life to meet you. Tech Smith of Fort Davis played aggressively in the Forest Hills Junior Championship, winning his first round. We shall return with the baseball roundup and a report of the New York Sprint Car Championship held this afternoon. But first, here's Ray Marlowe with the weather. The temperature today in New York City reached a record-breaking high of 98 degrees. According to the United States Weather Bureau, there should be a drop to the mid-80s by midnight. Tomorrow continues hot and humid. Strong gusty winds by Thursday, however, should mean more comfortable temperatures by the end of the week. Now back to the main news. During the New York Spring Car Championships at the Bronx Speedway, Red Mackey won the 50 lap main event. Hello. Kovac, I'm calling for Michelle Brent. Oh, oh yeah. She tried to reach you earlier, but had to leave for London, but said if you want to contact her, she'll be at the Chester house off the Tower Bridge Road. <laughs> okay, I'll make a note of it. Thank you. of any help? Well, my husband doesn't seem to have a telephone. At least the operator said he wasn't listed. Oh, that's not uncommon around here. But I can give you directions to reach Mrs. Sanford. Mrs. Sanford? She made your reservation. I believe she's related to your father. You'll meet her, of course. Louise often comes for dinner. Daddy never mentioned her in his letters. Daddy's letters weren't exactly epics. You can take the footpath to the village to reach her. She lives in Cliff Cottage. Oh, good. Well, we'll go there first thing in the morning, then. In the meantime, my dear, it's about an hour past your bedtime. Can't we go to the village now, Mommy? Jennifer. Okay. Good night, Mrs. Faraday. Good night, Jennifer. And good night, Miss Kangaroo. What's her name? Wendy. Wendy Wyndham Sanford. It is. I just decided. <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's frightfully disappointed, isn't she? But her father isn't here. To be perfectly frank, she isn't the only one. <laughs> without knowing it, without wanting to know it, I've been looking forward to this moment a little too long. Oh, I'm sure everything will work out. 
beautifully. For now, may I say I'm so happy to have you here. As is Wyndham. I can feel it. Wyndham is very pleased. Well, thank you, Mrs. Faraday. <laughs> and, uh, thank you, Wyndham. <laughs> I've been expecting you, right on schedule. I thought you English always said schedule. Come in. Thank you. I was just trying to make you feel at home. Well, that wouldn't be too hard. You have a very nice place. I share the flat with my sister. She's in Paris at the moment on holiday. Manor Estates Limited. You wouldn't be planning a vacation yourself. Well, as you can see, one can stay at your manor house in Wyndham. How about that? I only hope Mrs. Faraday has some rooms left. I made some inquiries. She owns Wyndham and takes guests during the summer. You know, noblesse oblige, taxes and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm surprised you didn't go ahead and reserve the rooms. I should have. Tom Kovac, I didn't tell the truth just now. I wasn't sure that you'd come. But I can't tell you how grateful I am that you have. Really, for that woman's sake. Hey. You get emotional about it. I'm here. I'm here. Really, thank you. Thank you for coming. You talk about me having powers. You did all right with that travel agent. My power consisted of handing him a five-pound note under the table. But two cancellations to dear old Wyndham. Look out! But my power never caused me to wake up soaking wet on the floor after a dip in the channel. And I bet it was the channel. You know, I could have stepped into my shower, slipped on a cake of soap, hit my head on the tiles, and crawled out half-conscious. I doubt that. I mean, you're here. Maybe because my shower doesn't normally run salt water. Look, look out! Now, I think you should leave for Wyndham first and arrive ahead of me. Hmm? Definitely. There are evil forces there, and we can't be too careful. That must be the cottage over there, Jan. Takes me a while to get around, you know, but do come in. Look, Mom, it's you. Yes, of course it is. Why should it be anyone else? I've followed your career for years. Why haven't they televised any of your films in this country? Can you tell me that? Aren't I rude? I'm screaming at you, and I haven't even introduced myself. You're a fan club named Louise Sanford Wyndham Branch, and I'm very happy to meet you at last. <laughs> Duncan and I are cousins by marriage, you know. But where is my father? I knew you would ask that. I wish I could tell you. I got a note from him to make arrangements for you at Wyndham. I naturally thought he'd be on hand to greet you. I'm afraid we've been temporarily stood up. Of course, but only temporarily. It isn't like Duncan. But let me show you, dear. Just round that corner, you'll find a funny little cabinet with drawers. Yes, I see it. In the bottom drawer on the right-hand side, there's something for you. My letters. And your drawings. He's very proud of you. He's held on to every scrap. When did Duncan leave, Mrs. Sanford? Oh, please, call me Louise. Well, he used to go back and forth. London, Glasgow, Liverpool. I haven't heard from him for some time, except for the note about your room. There in the drawer. 
But I received a letter from him written 10 days ago. But in the last six months, he's written very often. And his letters have been different. How peculiar that he's not at Wyndham. Perhaps he's in London. I, I wonder if I should try to get in touch with John Parrish. Are he and Duncan still friends? I hope not. I'm not very fond of Parrish. Rather a creep, as the children say nowadays, of creeps. <laughs> I wasn't very fond of him either, but he might know something. Do you have any idea where I might reach him? No, I'm afraid not. Do you know what I think, Jennifer? that that attractive rogue of a father of yours has some sort of super surprise for you and your ma, and he's waiting for exactly the right moment to spring it. Hmm? <laughs> now, shall we all have a happy and hopeful cup of tea? Oh, I'm for that. How about you, Jen? Yes, okay. May I help? Oh, all right, I can manage. That's a Polish name, isn't it? It's a name name, Mrs. Faraday. My paternal grandfather was from Warsaw. His wife was from Holland. The other side was Irish. I guess that makes me 100% Midwestern American, right? Yes, I suppose it does. And may I show you our library? Miss Glenn, I'd like you to meet a countryman of yours. Mr. Thomas Kovac, Andrea Glenn. How do you do? Haven't we met somewhere before? Or does everyone ask you that? Perhaps we have met before. But if we haven't, I'm very glad to meet you now. And Miss Glenn's daughter, Jennifer. Hi, Mr. Kovac. You must be tired from your train ride. Let me show you to your room. Perhaps we'll see you later, Mr. Kovac. It's quite safe, Mr. Kovac. They do have lifts in the American Midwest, I assume. Oh, yeah. yeah. Smell the sea. The salted perfume. <laughs> Mr. Ferretti tells me he spends every summer in England. Oh, nice. For England. Mr. Kovac, Miss Brent. How do you do? Signor Varelli. Yeah, Cherry. Pleased to meet you. I wish I'd taken the two o'clock car. That yours? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, please, please. Hopkins will do that. That's all right. I can get her. Signora Faraday. Something tells me that tonight you will serve the Dover Sole from your water so blessedly close. I'm afraid we're having roast beef tonight. <laughs> hmm. The woman, the girl, and the elevator, they're all here. And look. Your salty shower. Okay, so where's the evil force? Give me time. Give me time. I've only been here three hours. My trip is finished, complete, and Ray again. I have seen every film that you have made. Every one. Oh, well, I put you several ahead of me, senor, but thank you very much. Why didn't you tell me that the screaming lady in your vision is Andrea Glenn? I never saw her in a flick where she screamed. That still doesn't explain the sly little girl. It's her daughter and a doll. 